has never been more perfect. It is no longer your world. According to Masonic author David Ovison, the word dollar comes from the German word taller. While there are many taller designs, one in particular is mentioned, with the image of Jesus Christ crucified on one side, while the reverse bears the image of a serpent on a cross and a reference to the book of Numbers from the Old Testament. In this account, the children of Israel had complained against God. The scripture says, and the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much of the people of Israel died. When they repented, God commanded Moses to erect a bronze serpent upon a pole, saying that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Some believe that the serpent cross is the original inspiration for the American dollar sign today. While the image of the bronze serpent holds a very particular meaning for Christianity, David Ovison explains that Kabbalists and alchemists find an interesting parallel in the Hebrew gematria. Ovison claims that these numerical equivalents allowed magicians to draw a connection between the brazen or bronze serpent and the Messiah. But exactly what Messiah do they mean? The phrase e pluribus unum, or out of many, one, appears in the banner held in the mouth of the American eagle. The word one appears a total of seven times on the dollar bill. Ovison writes, in magical numerology, the number seven is regarded with a special veneration. Certain texts that deal with the meanings of numbers insist that seven stands for the complete temple. The temple he refers to is the ancient temple of God, built by King Solomon in the city of Jerusalem. Ovison goes on to say that the concept of a complete temple is symbolized by the unfinished pyramid of the Great Seal.
where the symbol of a Messiah figure is also shown with the all-seeing eye, representing the capstone that will one day complete the pyramid. And then where's the third hexagram? The third hexagram can be found on the other part of the great seal. Again, connect all the 13 together, the 13 um, letters, the 13 um, steps in the pyramid, connect all this together. And you will note, with the circle that's already there, it forms the third hexagram. And if we just simply go and enlarge the, that section, just start with a small one, and just keep enlarging it, and enlarge it even more, even with the background noise there, as I call it, I think it becomes very apparent what we are now looking at, that it is still a skull-faced winged demon. And it is these demons that are protecting and blessing the two great seals of the Order of the Illuminati. And it would make perfect sense that it had to be demons used to protect these seals since I am convinced it was those same demons that handed them over to Thomas Jefferson when they first created them. Any place, any time Anything we like Any price, any cost Anything we want acknowledging this doll and through that the inhuman spirit tricked you you gave it permission to infest your lives what's an inhuman spirit it's something that's never walked the earth in human form it's something demonic so the doll was never possessed no no it was used as a conduit it was moved around to give the impression of possession demonic spirits don't possess things they possess people he wanted to get inside of you. The infestation, that's, that's the whispering, the footsteps, the feeling of another presence, which ultimately grows into oppression. The second stage. Now, this is where the victim, and it's usually the one who's the most psychologically vulnerable, is targeted specifically by an external force. Breaks the victim down, crushes their will, and once in a weakened state, Leads them to the third and final stage, possession.
Like they're workers. Signed each one of us. It's they just they're like liquid. the order of Valtiel and they want you you know what it is I was the master of the order <laughs> how could I not know the seal of Metatron it is a key what does it unlock the true nature of things you have the seal of Metatron with it I can summon the god give it to me Take it. I want to see the truth of what you are. The United States Printing Office issued a 400-page publication entitled UFOs and Related Subjects, an Annotated Bibliography. The author was the senior bibliographer for the Library of Congress, Ms. Lynn E. Coteau. During her research, she read over 1,000 articles, books, and other literature. She summarizes her findings in the preface of the bibliography. A large part of the available UFO literature is closely linked with mysticism and the metaphysical. It deals with subjects like mental telepathy, automatic writing, and invisible entities, as well as phenomena like poltergeist manifestations and possession. Many of the UFO reports now being published in the popular press recount alleged incidents that are strikingly similar to demonic possession and psychic phenomena that have long been known to theologians and parapsychologists. This document was compiled for the United States Air Force and is now in the Library of Congress. Thank you.